peace and all good things. Now there's a story that I heard, I believe it comes from Ripley's Believe It or Not, of a man who was electrocuted, I believe, he was in the shower or something like that, got electrocuted in some way, and he was pronounced dead, or at least they thought he was dead, and he was uh, taken away to the funeral home, and a short time after, he was really not dead. And he woke up from whatever shock that he was in, and he realized where he was, and he went and he called his wife. And the wife could not believe what she was hearing when he said, hi, it's me, hung up the phone, and uh, would not even try to talk to him. And so he tried to call up some relatives who thought that maybe they were hearing a ghost or something like that, and even went and tried to visit some of his neighbors, and they just thought that this was some sort of a sick trick or something like that. And finally, he called up some of his relatives and friends who had not heard about his death yet, and they obviously were able to convince his wife and, and family of actually what happened. I think that's a pretty incredible story, at least from Ripley's Believe It or Not, but I think it's kind of similar to uh, where we, what we see in these resurrection narratives after uh, Jesus' resurrection. And as he is appearing to the apostles and appearing uh, to different people, he comes with this sense of peace we hear uh, in Luke's Gospel that they were startled, the apostles were startled and terrified. They thought they were seeing a ghost. And this was Jesus' response to them. Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? You know, I, I must say that at least over the past year, from the pandemic to the much violence that's going on in our society today to perhaps so much economic and other difficulties in which so many are going through, I must say that I have been troubled. Questions have come up in my heart. How can God allow this to happen? How can we find meaning in all of these different things going on in our world today. And I think that Jesus' response to the apostles in this moment can really give hope, I think, for myself and in all of our lives, where he says, look, look at my hands and my feet, that it is I, myself, you know, I think that we celebrate the resurrection. We celebrate Jesus dying on the cross for us. And at the moment, it can seem, yes, this is wonderful. Hallelujah. Let us rejoice. And then when we go into our real, real lives, if you will, and we see that sometimes there's a lot of distress. There's a lot of questions that arise in our lives, that sometimes we can lose that hope. We can lose that joy in which we get from the resurrection. And our hearts can be troubled. And when we look at Jesus, when we look at this message, we can say, is that really you? Can you actually change and transform our lives, especially those aspects of our lives that are really troubling? And Jesus stands before us today in all of our questions, in all of our troubles, in all of those ways that we may think that Jesus is just a ghost or that the resurrection really can't have an effect on our lives. And he says, look, this is me. I am truly risen. It is I. So let us today not be like the wife and the family, not believing in the possibility of life that can come from suffering and death. 
but let us have hope that Jesus is truly risen and not let our hearts be troubled and continue to spread this message to the world. God bless you.